Hey guys, I'm Angelique and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. I wanted to jump in and talk about um, this mixtape that you just dropped, You Get Me. Um, you know, one thing that I love about music is that it takes the listeners to a very special place, to wherever that place that the artist themselves is writing or singing about. With you, you yeah. took me back to the 90s with this mixtape. And I want to know why the 90s for you? What kind of inspired this mixtape for you? Um, well, my mom, she used to listen to a lot of 90s music back when I was younger. So um, she used to listen to a lot of 90s and early 2000s music. And I was always drawn to that because my big sister is also a 90s baby. And she is also so, you know, she was raised with the 2000s. And so um, I feel very connected to that era. As far as being connected to that era, how do you kind of discover your own sound, your own style while still kind of paying homage to the 90s? Yeah, I mean, we it's, we use their elements and my element. And um, I don't know, we kind of mix it together and make magic. So let's dive right in onto this mixtape and like the creative process behind it. Like what producers did you work with or collaborate with to, to make this mixtape happen? Um, I actually worked a lot with my production team. Um, we have Jane, we have Ramir, we have a lot of more people, but um, um, we, it, was, it was a very good process because from one song we got inspired to the next one and from there we kept on getting inspired and um, yeah. The reason that I said that you take me back to the 90s is not just the style, but you also kind of give nods to, you know, iconic lyrics, to iconic songs. What was yeah. it about these lyrics and songs that drew your attention that made that, you know, that they're so important to you? They're just so iconic. Like I have um, one of Beyonce's, I didn't flip her song, but um, I have, well, I flipped the Destiny's Child, but um, I have one of Beyonce's lyrics to the left, to the left. Um, we, we use that in one of the songs and it just, it really completes, you know, the whole thing. And, you know, that lyric is so iconic. It's like, to the left, to the left, you know, we're talking about Beyonce's song, you know? And when it comes to flipping songs like that, like, what is that process like? Do you, do you have already in mind, like, what songs, what lyrics you want to flip? Or do you kind of work on your material and then kind of pick and choose what lyrics and what songs you want to flip? Yeah, we basically, we first choose, like, okay, what, what song do we want to flip? Like, what song do we connect most to from the 90s or for the early 2000s, from the early 2000s? Um, so we go with that. And then after we just go with the flow. And with these like six, uh, eight tracks that you have on here, um, you know, what kind of challenges did you face in order to kind of make them happen? Uh, because, you know, the, the studio sounds fun and it sounds easy all the time, but I'm sure like there's, you know, there's issues with like trying to hit that vocal range. There's issues with like, yeah, <laughs> so what no. were those issues? Um, as you know, the 90s and early 2000s music has a lot of vocal range. They hit crazy notes in like a matter of six seconds and I'm like, ah! so um, we definitely, definitely needed to incorporate that in the music. Um, it was hard because we recorded one song like six, seven times. And it's like, it's, it's, it's like you take like almost one or two days recording it once, you know? So we spent various days on one track recording it and trying to get the perfect takes and the perfect vocals and perfect ad libs. So it's definitely a process and challenging, but I definitely think that I grew a lot from this project vocally. How do you think you grew a lot vocally? Um, do you feel like you discovered a new vocal range that you didn't hit before? Yes, uh, all these runs, it's like, Chris, <laughs> like I hit like a crazy run and like, they're like, I think they're like 13 notes in like four seconds. So it's like a bunch. So it's, it's like, you know, it's challenging, but it's really <laughs> fun. Like once you get it, it's like, <laughs> oh my God, I got <laughs> so yeah but how do you how do you learn that practicing 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 
you have to do it over and over and over and over. <laughs> so what was the song on this mixtape that that had that that crazy range that you had? Almost all of my songs are, you know, they have a lot of stuff going on in them. But one of them that was pretty challenging was Act Like That. And now I sing it and it's just so fun because I know I could do this and this and that. So, yeah. Now, as far as like songwriting, how do you feel you became a better songwriter during this process? Um, you know, we put a lot of emotions into these and sometimes it's hard to convey emotions into words, you know, and writing with Ramir and writing with all these other people. Um, I definitely think I grew a lot because I'm young and they have been writing for such a long time. So it's like, I learned from them, you know? So I'm, I'm very thankful that I get to work with people that have been writing for years, like over 10 years. So, um, yeah. So why did you want this mixtape to be like that introduction for you? Because I think it's such a big part of my life um, and I really love it. So it's like, and recently that's all I have been listening to. So I'm like, oh, we're going to drop this, you know? So um, yeah, and I think like right now, 90s is coming back. The early 2000s, they're coming back. Like every, the style, everything, it just, you know, is coming all back. So that always returns. So, yeah. All right. So you can't you can't be singing '90s music without obviously those ranges, but also without the choreography. So, as far yes. as dancing goes, like, <laughs> how do you feel about your dancing? And is that something that you're you're starting to kind of learn and perfect as you go? Um. Well, I have loved to dance. Um, sadly, my mom hasn't put me in dance classes when I was young. So, you know, it's a little hard to catch up now. But um, yeah, I think it's really fun. Honestly, like, I, I once I'm in it, I get the hang of it. And it's like, oh, like, you can't stop me now, you know. So I mean, it's really fun, though. So another cool thing about you is that you're bilingual and you kind of showcased that on a recent cover that you did for a Selena Gomez song. Um, talk to me about kind of making that song, uh, Lose You to Love Me, your own. And, you know, how challenging was it to actually put Spanish lyrics? Because, you know, Spanish and English lyrics don't always fit perfectly. Translate in the same way. well. Exactly. Yeah. Spanish, I mean, it's hard because you could be saying something in English and in Spanish, you translate it word by word and it means com something completely different or it's not the right grammar or something. Um, so, I mean, we definitely had to change. I mean, we didn't change the concept, but we definitely needed to change like what this line was about. And we switched it to like something different in Spanish. So, um, I mean, it was like writing a song in Spanish, you know, so. And why this song in particular? The song just is, it, it means a lot, you know, um, you have to lose someone and you don't have to, but you know, <laughs> you know, if, <laughs> if someone's being so toxic and you depend your happiness on them, you have to kind of let them go and find happiness within yourself. You know, you have to be happy with who you are because you're going to be in this body for the rest of your life. So, um, yeah, I, I I mean, that's how I interpret the song. And the fact that you're able to sing in both languages and, you know, both voices are incredible. So do you see yourself doing any more Spanish material, maybe original material um, in the yes. near future? For sure. Um, I definitely see myself like in a few weeks, I'm going to put out a Spanish version of one of the songs. Um, from a mixtape. So yeah, I'm for sure. I'm always going to incorporate Spanish because, you know, I'm 50% English, but then I'm also 50% Spanish. And that particular song you're going to release in Spanish. Did you also record it during the, during the recording process of the actual mixtape or is that something we that you recently did? We actually are working on them right now. We're, okay. we're literally working on them right now. Yeah. 
Do you feel like it, it now that you are translating into Spanish? Do you feel like the the message kind of changed in a sense? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're we're trying to we're trying to do it like Spanglish, you know. Okay. So it's, it's gonna have a little bit of this, and you know, but yeah. Okay. So and and lastly. Uh, para todos los, los fans de Latinoamérica, ¿quién eres? ¿Quién es Angelique Montero? ¿Y por qué deben de escuchar tu música? Bueno, yo soy Angelique. Um, eh, mis padres son de Venezuela. Nací en Miami. Um, no sé, a I mí mean, creo que pongo mucho emoción en mis canciones y esfuerzo. Y también yo amo la música. Y... Quiero que cuando ustedes escuchen la música, quiero que ustedes sientan una emoción. Tú sabes, um, que sientan la nostal 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 nostalgia. Nostalgia. Ay, no sé. Pero, uh, <risa> pero que sientan emociones. Y si puedo ayudar a una persona, cuando, o sea, like, si alguien se siente mal y escuchan mi canción y se, se sienten bien, o sea, eso es. ¿Por qué hago esto? Entonces, ya. Yeah. A I mí mean, mi español no es tan bueno, pero yo, yo, yo entiendo y sé cómo hablar un poco. <laughs> Amazing. Well, congratulations, Angelique. Thank you again for taking the time to talk to me. And so much. I can't wait to hear these versions in Spanish. Yes, I'm really excited.